My guest today, like me, was born and raised in Pennsylvania. He grew up in an East Coast town with an East Coast attitude. And as an adult, like me, he adopted San Francisco as his new home, at least on TV, as Danny Tanner, one of TV's most well-known sitcom dads. The world got to know the kind, sensitive side of Bob Saget, and the world continued to know Bob as the genial, friendly, and G-rated host of America's Funniest Home Videos. In the years following that show, uh, he's been involved in a number of other sitcoms and hosted several other shows. In 2005, the documentary uh, The Aristocrats, which focuses around one very old joke and the way that different comedians tell it, uh, introduced many people to a different side of Bob Saget. As a stand-up comic, Bob can be dark, vulgar, and way over the top. His, uh, his scene in The Aristocrats was a huge shock to anyone uh, who knew only the sitcom side of Bob Saget, but it was really the center of the whole movie. He takes the joke to the utmost extreme, and uh, it was around the same time that he appeared on the HBO show Entourage, playing an over-the-top version of himself as well, and bringing the same irreverent uh, attitude to what became a very memorable cameo. But for those of you out there who might still be Full House fans, don't worry, Entourage Bob didn't kill sensitive dad Bob. You may have heard a very Danny Tanner vibe in the narrator of How I Met Your Mother, a show that Bob has been uh, involved in since it, it started in 2005, the same year The Aristocrats came out and the same year he appeared on Entourage. For the entire nine seasons of that show, Bob has been the voice uh, of future Ted Mosby, uh, guiding us through the twists and turns of Ted's relationship uh, on his exhausting journey to finally meet the love of his life. That show just wrapped up uh, a couple weeks back, and Bob is already on to the next phase of his life and career. He just came out with a book entitled Dirty Daddy, uh, and I read some of it. It's great so far, very funny, and there are, uh, there's a lot of Bob's life in there. So, uh, yeah, whatever you don't get today, you, you'll get in that book. He... he uh, he hasn't had an easy life. He's had a huge amount of success, but he's also seen a lot of loss. Uh, the book was released on April 8th, and uh, you can get it now at your local bookstore or at any online retailer as a paper book or an ebook. He's also touring right now, doing stand up all over the world. We took a break from recording a few weeks back and sat down for this interview with uh, in Bushwalker Studio in Santa Monica. It had been a while since I'd seen Bob, and we really got into it for almost two hours. So we broke this podcast up. Uh, it, it's going to be a two-parter, I think the first we've ever done. So we will bring this one to you this week and, uh, and then the second half next week. Bob has a really interesting style. He likes to go off on tangents, which uh, are basically improv comedy. Some of them are great, and some of them are totally bizarre and great, but he does... Uh, as he says himself, always come back to the question. Uh, so we get some jokes and we get some realness, but overall I think what we got uh, was a great conversation. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's my friend and great comedian Bob Saget, this week on the podcast. What do you do when nobody's looking? It was about was it about nine years ago? We uh, train had a show at the House of Blues in Los Angeles, and uh, and that's when uh, the first time that I, I got to meet you, you were dating a nine year old, I think, at the time. How old was oh, we're, she? We're on. The, we're recording now, aren't we? <laughs> uh, yeah. She uh, she was 
younger than me, but she was in double digits. Oh, she I'm, was, just, I'm just kidding. She was really, she was of age. She, she had an ID. She was really lovely. And, she, uh, she was at the time. Uh, here, let's start over because okay. I don't yeah, want to insult we'll you. It. That was a terrible insult. Oh, no, no. Uh, we, have, we haven't even started. I'm going to say worse things about myself. So nine years ago, I think it, it really was. Nine years, right? Nine years ago, it, I was dating at, a 10-year-old. At, at the House of Blues. <laughs> it's me trying to start this off well. <clears throat> you, uh, it was the first time I got to meet Bob Saget. And, uh, and when I met you, I was so blown away that you would even consider coming to a train concert. But, uh, well, a but huge, the song Meet fan. Virginia, you said, was a song that your girlfriend at the time was really into. And then you came to the concert. And we've been friends ever since. And we've done a benefit uh, concerts together and yep, you, uh, just kind of kept in touch all for all these years. And so, thanks for doing this podcast, man. I know you're you're really busy and it's, it's we'll talk I'm about not all really. It's my cool pleasure. I'm doing. just trying to get back to that first girlfriend, and this might help because she knows you're trying to get she back loves to your work so much. And I haven't seen her for t at least ten years. You haven't seen her since then. No. So this is it. This is my communication to get back. With <laughs> Are you currently dating uh, anybody? No. No, I actually made a woman kind of like Kelly LeBrock in Weird Silence. I, I just added some um, Epsom salts to tainted you, orange you, juice. <laughs> and I, that was a reaction. You made a woman. Yeah, I made a woman. And now I'm, I'm about as single as it goes. Which really? Which is what puts me on a book tour and then a... Right. You have uh, a new book that uh, I pre-ordered it yesterday. You, you can't do it. I was going to get it. it. No, I want to. I'm not gonna. I'm not like. Of course, you're gonna give me one because I want you to sign it. Right. But you just did a gesture. It didn't look like sign it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. No, I it's definitely to, not sign it. No, I want you to stick three of the chapters together for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know which ones they are. So I, I pre-ordered the book. Do you want to talk about the book first? No. <laughs> Well, I can just say the name's Dirty Daddy. Dirty but, Daddy. But then we can talk about Why it. is it called Dirty Daddy? Well, Because kinda... a lot of people don't know, like, kind of, uh, I mean, I don't know. When when I went to so see your stand-up, that's when I, got, I was like, okay, Dirty Daddy makes all the sense in the world. It's the funniest stand-up oh, on earth, you, man. You. You're so incredibly good at it. But it's so opposite of what of I character think people I... know of Bob Saget on television. Well, I've had different incarnations, and the, the definitely the, the show that's the sitcom with the kids, and then the the video show where people got hit in the crotch. You know, it was a yeah. blooper show. They didn't think of you as an irreverent, you know, voice of comedy. <laughs> right. It, it, those were massively seen shows. Though. Huge, huge. And I um, always had a weird sense of humor since I was 17 and started doing stand-up. So... I really never changed that much, but it's just, you know, how doors open or door, doors don't in this business. So I always had what people look at as a bipolar career where, oh, he's so he's filthy by night and then by day he does these family shows. So but stand up for me is is just one of the things I love to do, which I get to vent and be, you know, myself. But you're great at it, and it's really hard to do. I know people who are writers, mm -hmm. and, and also people who can be, uh, they can do character comedy, or or act in in comedy, right. and be great at it, and then it's like, okay, now you gotta go write some material, and go do 15 minutes, and it's almost impossible for some of the people that It's hard, but it's, it's a weird thing, but I always had that facility at 17 to be able to do that, which eliminated me from other things as well. Cause even though I do acting, it's still it, when you're really good at something and that you keep wanting you to do it, it's, you, you don't really go. I don't want like, I mean, basically my stand up now is equivalent to taking balloon animals and making my penis into them. You know, I could say, <laughs> well, do you want a dog? And then I could just take my <laughs> penis and just like wrap it around wow. and, it, and pull it. And it's a would, dachshund. You I know? would love to see. And you I would, no, actually, I don't want to see don't it. don't want to see it. And it, <laughs> it kept me from getting a lot of kid parties. Because <laughs> I was kind of a... You said it was a balloon. And, well, it is, kid. You know, and, then, and then I'd make that sound. <laughs> as, you, as you hold the air, yeah. let the air out. Yeah. And I said, you got to come up real close yeah, to feel this air. Yeah, you got to come closer. And then they call authorities. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can't do that around kids. 
So I want to go just back to the beginning so I when can we met, get all but, the way to... No, 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 before that. Because you and I, I didn't realize are both from Pennsylvania. Yes. Like, I'm from Erie, and you're from Philly. Yeah. And what I realized and Philly's is... Philly's pretty eerie, if that's pretty the eerie. truth. But I'm, what it's I'm not realizing Hershey. is how many people that I'm meeting that uh, have transferred from Pennsylvania to, like, like, uh, like uh, Daryl Hall, for instance. Yeah. He's from your part of the world, and, and uh, I feel like Pennsylvania plays a huge role in who you are as a comedian. I mean, when I hear West Coast comedians and East Coast comedians, it is very, very different. It's That's, like it's like the world of hip hop where you could tell the difference back in the day and now it's one thing, but right. but there's a I have a friend who is a comedian. <clears throat> he has a theory about East and West Coast. And he said East Coast comedy is about the dick west coast comedy is about the ass and i was like that just is, makes no sense to me at so all if you folded the country in half you could it could fuck itself <laughs> <laughs> and not in a nice way but i have no idea what he's talking about and i wanted to know if you did i don't know because i've got friends you know like i have some australian friends jim jeffries he talks about and i don't know where that falls in so but as far as the u.s goes I don't know. I think it's cold, and that makes a person more elements that are against you probably make you funnier. Right. You know, your parents stuff that messes you up. If you got a Freudian mom situation, that helps. To, that helps. helps you to be a. <laughs> I never thought of that before. That helps. Really screwed up. That's good. That's a plus. Abuse helps. Yeah. Uh, if you have a dad that beat you, odds are you don't go on stage too much. <laughs> you, you probably do uh, stunt work. <laughs> But if you uh, if you have both parents that didn't give you any time and all they did would ha was have sex, you probably uh, are a producer. <laughs> I, I I don't know. He might there might be a good theory about it, but there's so many comedians that are West Coast that are San Francisco based. I mean, I, when I came out to LA in 1978 before the gold rush, I would go up to San Francisco and I would see all you know when Robin was starting and. People like Bob Sarlat and and Jeremy Kramer and people who worked the Holy City Zoo and all these places and that was a San Francisco kind of comedian. So I don't maybe that was all about the ass because because there was a lot of uh, homophobia. Maybe they were just trying to protect that area. When I went and saw your stand up, you were so excited because you were like, "Oh man, come! Robin Williams is going to be here tonight," and you blew everybody away. Like, uh, thank you for adding everybody away. Because if you had just gone, you blew. Oh, away! Yeah, you blew. We're just adding away. Night. Yeah, that you blew you were... everybody. That would but, be a bad. But it was, it was, it was really like I'm learning. You were great that night. I'm man. learning you about blew humility, <laughs> and you are like a humble guy. Because Robin Williams, he's not. He doesn't come close to how funny you are. Oh, you, I. You but can't. no, I'm not like saying that because you're here and he's not. He's so. Which he's so really, brilliant. If he was here, I mean, he's probably usually say. brilliant. Maybe. I'm kind of over the Robin Williams, but I can't get over you because you you are always something you're 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 being creative all the time. To me, Robin Williams did a thing twenty years ago, he's doing it tomorrow and he's gonna do it today later on. He changed well but I don't know. I, I I'm I love Robin. He's always been nice and always been impressive to me. But I, I think what's good about me is I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there might be I think something. That's to what, it. Maybe what you're getting at. I think that that's I have no, what makes you hilarious. Well, thank you. It's being I'm I'm like Carmen Santiago, but he doesn't know where he is in the world. <laughs> you can't like everybody's looking for him. How Was he on that flight? <laughs> oh, we can't bring that up. That's not good. There's no time that you can bring that up. <laughs> Sorry. Can. You can leave it in. I mean, I didn't say anything too. I mean, this won't necessarily be for... Nobody listens to this podcast. <laughs> I anyway. don't think that's true. It's it's uh, you guys. I think somebody's listening. I don't think any. You're... No, it's I It's not very so. good. I have a memory of meeting you, uh, I, I think, before I came to your... It was right before I came to your show. I had gone... There were big... Uh, radio guys here, Mark and Brian. Yeah, and, Mark and Brian. And it was like 6.30 in the morning, and it was at, I think, the Wiltern. Right, the Wiltern. That's and right. And I was there, and I got out of bed with an XXX, 
um, that was her rating. <laughs> yeah. But she... Uh, She's but, dirty. Uh, she was... God bless her. If the, but is there a God? So anyway, she was in bed. And it was early. And I went and met you. And, and Meet Virginia was literally her favorite song that oh, existed cool. on the earth. And then uh, I remember calling her and leaving her a message of just the song. And I think that just infuriated her more that I was seeing you live. Right. Then I came home and... Uh, I don't remember. I got back in bed. I think she left immediately in a huff. And then we then I brought her to your show and then that was then everything was fine cuz she thought maybe she had a shot with you. Oh, really? Yeah. I wish I would have known. I would have totally been all over her. You could have swooped on her and yeah. little antibiotics would have cleared up all the mouth stuff. <laughs> <laughs> she's very sweet. She used the salve. No, she's a good person. Is she? <laughs> yeah, that my joke is unless you've ever met any other people. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good setup. It's always a. But she's nice. I think she. Yeah, she's got a good life. I have nothing bad to say about her. Unless you have like a half hour. <laughs> no, she's good. I've had four uh, women since then. Well, four two what? of them were women. Uh, <laughs> one was a centaur, and the other was a millipede. <laughs> I did it a uh, a minotaur, and then I, that was right after Pat Benatar. <laughs> Is Pat Benatar considered to be like a minotaur? Yes, oh, I right. think so. Because that's if you put that in your name, it sounds like you're saying you're a hybrid part human, part horse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or maybe she used to be. She has been a tar. Right. Well, that brings up a whole other thing because that's. <laughs> That's a, there's a, I, don't, I shouldn't no, try I don't to be funny around should. you. This isn't. I'm not. There's good an at avatar. It. There's a leotar, and there's a reotar. <laughs> and uh, the reotar is what you wear if you're doing a really special dance. It's a dance skin thing. It's called a reotar. <clears throat> I don't know what it's made of. It's probably got some poly uh, fiber in it. <clears throat> So, how much dead air do you do you do on the podcast? <laughs> you don't have to change it at all, do you? Uh uh You don't edit this thing, do you? We try not to. So, when you went from uh, going to Temple, that the school, the school Temple, but yeah. you also probably went to Temple against my wishes. Yes, yeah. I was in a. Synagogue. So you went to Temple in Pennsylvania. Yes, and uh, and then you. Because you actually, your family moved from Pennsylvania or that area to California. Then you went back to Pennsylvania to go to college. Well, why you know why did you do that? My dad was with a company that was going bankrupt. So it's a really fun childhood. It was uh, kind of a Navy brat, but it was Food Fair Pantry Pride Supermarkets, which I think they had in Erie, Pennsylvania. Yeah, that sounds right. And um, he was a meathead. He was an executive with meat. This is all in the book. Wow. Believe it or not. This I, is in the book. Oh, cool. It's about meat. And I uh, was a deli clerk for like five years while I was going to Temple University. But before that, we, I moved middle and ninth grade and middle between 11th and 12th grade. Those are tough years, man. You must have been pissed off. My breasts had come in and then <laughs> and my period was late and I oh. broke my hymen on a teeter-totter <laughs> at the junior high. And then I got back and then it was just... Uh, I didn't know who I was. I really didn't. I was, um, it was like a Marilyn Manson cover. I didn't know what I looked like or <laughs> who I was. I had a comb over. And you so had a comb over. I did. And, and so and you're one of glasses. how many kids? I had two older sisters, neither of whom are alive. Please save your laughs to the end. Which is like, man, what a, I mean, that's a, that's a lot to like, part of every comic like musician, you know, you have to have really shitty things happen to you. Yeah. Because you have to relate to human beings. And human beings are like, we're on this journey of struggle. And sometimes it's, if you don't laugh, you cry or die even. But those were some brutal outcomes in your family. Because now, you know, we had just spoken that you just lost your second parent. Because yeah. both of my parents are gone. But I've never lost a sibling. I have six... I have uh, six brothers and sisters, and I like can't imagine that because then you start thinking about your own mortality right. on your in your generation. Where when your parents go, you're just like, okay, well, I'm the boss now. 
like I have right. to I have to take this from here but I I don't want to like make make light of it but what it's got to be more difficult losing a sibling or is it all just painful like uh, and I'm I'm asking like as a friend because I haven't experienced that yet but I know what, Well you're lucky and I hope you don't for you know a billion years hope that's really very cool I mean I have three daughters and I don't want anything that would except be, the greatness of life to happen to them right my mom was uh 89 so and she just literally passed away a few weeks ago uh depending on when this is uh you're listening this to is going to go out right uh, uh simultaneously with your book hopefully so we can get this out uh, and that's and cool we and can that's, sell 15 more of your books 15 books is a lot my it mother would these be days because I'm going to steal. I'm going to Pergo only steals books <clears throat> and videos and m music. So he's never going to buy your book. If people steal books, I mean, how, how, how do you arrest a person that's stealing books? Exactly. I mean, I want to read officer. I really want to read. <laughs> <laughs> you come with me, son. You don't sorry steal. To, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, you were talking about some loss. I want to get back I, to that. Yeah. I, I, I deviate from the loss cause it's, it's, and actually, it's, the book's about death and comedy and how they intersect. So that's kind of... And it's a funny book, I think. And my mom actually passed away while I was writing it, so, while I was finishing it. So, Was she coherent? Like, could Did she ever read parts of what you were I writing? I gave her, at the very end, it's a, like a 265-page book. I, she read 111 pages, and then her eyes started to go because I'd been poking her in them like the Three Stooges. <laughs> no, I hadn't done that. No, and and she, her eyes started to go, and then the next day she said, I can only read one more page. But ironically, that's when it started to get a little dicier and talk about, you know, things I did that I'm not proud of. Hmm. You know, stuff with women and, and uh, alcohol and hmm. L.A. and just, right. you know, misogynistic, uh, screwed up, dumb stuff I did. And she... Stopped reading around then, and then I had a big decision what to do, whether to keep her present in the book as a she's a living person or talk post. And I decided to keep it present and do a dedication to her at the end. Mm, cool. But she got to read what, what the question was about losing siblings. She got to read it as a chapter in it called The Loss of Two Great Women. Hmm. And it's my two sisters. And she lost four children, my mother and, Man, my, and my father. Uh, and... Two of them, one of them, you've been, you were gracious enough to do. I'm part of the Scleroderma Research Foundation. I'm on the board, and you did a benefit for us years ago, and you're doing it again, which is um, April 23rd in San Francisco, which is the nicest thing that you could possibly do. You can't touch me more than that unless you put, you know, Vavo on your hand and work me like a Jeff Dunham puppet. But <laughs> no, I'm saying he's helping me, is what I'm saying. Um, he just is. but you it, it seems in poor taste what i'm saying but i was just trying to get out of the the sadness i mean it, it, there is Man, a huge I, you know I, I i hate to bring it up i just i guess what i what i love about the people that i love is first of all i love people that are great at what they do you know like people who people who are great at what they do you can't mistake that they worked hard to get there because it's just obvious whether you're you're uh, Bill Gates or you're some um, a great mechanic on cars like or yesterday build, we did an event build gates or build gates <laughs> but like we did this uh, event yesterday for BMW they they just presented their new electric car and these people are serious serious people like they devote every bit of their brain space to building this beautiful thing. And you have to admire them on whatever level you want. Uh, and so when people, when people don't know about what I know about, I just want them to know about it. Because I think that you are one of the most talented people that I've ever met. And I've oh, met a lot of really I've met nice. a lot of Did a lot of really talented people. So you got the ecstasy I sent you. <laughs> but I'm I'm saying this because <laughs> what I know about great people is that with greatness comes loss. Like sometimes loss that will just take you to your knees and go like fuck it, I can't anymore. And you've overcome so much stuff, you know, like you have three children, as you've mentioned, and, you know, you, you deal with whatever it is that you feel like you're responsible for in your life and you're trying to 
figure that stuff out because that's what we do as as men but like you have really achieved such massive incredible success and that's, so that's the fact that your parents to do with all this the, the fact I'm, that your parents have been able to see that and like your mom and so she, at 89 she got to see all of this stuff and you probably feel like it wasn't enough and you wish you could have done more. No, I'm glad stuff. she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh Near the end, she was actually telling me, uh, you're such a great man, Bob. See, what an amazing thing but to hear from But there was a doctor you. named Bob. She was looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> he was just standing next to me. And then she said, and you're good too, Bob. Bobby, you're all right. Did she, she want you she to be a doctor? Very, huh? Did she want you to be a doctor? She did. I wanted to be a doctor. And uh, I just didn't have any facility for science or math. And I just loved cutting deli too much. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you really know how to, how to clean a slicer or to cut a quarter pound of corned beef for a customer, yeah. you know, you're doing something for them. And the customer is always right. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, it, the loss is a really, you know, as I don't know who said it, Aeschylus, Aeschylus, I don't know how you said his name. I mean, he's dead. Nobody cares about him. He's got no relatives. He was a Greek myth, you know, myth giver. Pergo, you should know. Who is it? I think it's Aeschylus. Aeschylus. He said wisdom comes through suffering. So mm -hmm. that was his big thing. And it's like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, how, how much like do you have terrible... to? He didn't have a good life, I don't think. I yeah, mean, he, he probably... sounded like a smart guy who just got shit on a lot by everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he probably lived some Caligula life and he was on the receiving end, you know? <laughs> but I, uh, one sister that passed away from this disease, scleroderma, was, uh, she was 47. And so I don't stop doing those benefits and I get to, we've raised $30 million for that. So that makes me, sometimes it feels like, oh God, how are we going to book these? You know, I've used, there's, there's only so many people that are there's not many Pat Monahans in the world that go yes I'm I want to help you I'll make it available I'll in the next day call back and go yes I can do that date and then you make money you instantly can make money I mean that's and, and a, tell people what scleroderma is because well, I didn't know until you know we talked about it but it's it's, uh, it's a hardening of the skin sclero means uh, derma means skin and hardening uh, the hardening of it is, is sclero. So and it, it just, it progresses and there's really no stopping it, right? Well, yeah. there is, they can put it in kind of a remission. Now there are, there is new medication and that's the reason I'm involved with the sclero right. and so research. Foundation. The work you've been able to do has, is actually starting to bring a result, right? It is actually uh, putting some people their scleroderma is at bay. It is not progressing. What happens is that's you're, amazing, dude. That's like, really nice, um, and that's happening with a lot of. Um, it's part autoimmune. It's part vascular disease. There's many different morphings of this disease, but what's indigenous to this one is your esophagus flap starts to go, and your hands, your fingers recede, and it's Jesus. got some very disfiguring qualities right. to no, it. No, it is. It is alarming. When you see someone in the the the, uh, the final stages where they've changed physically immensely, like you probably didn't recognize your sister or wouldn't have unless you watched the progression, like it's a very it's scary. It it is scary, and and one of the nice things about being involved with the Scleroderma Research Foundation is that you give the disease a face, and you, there are people that are patients that come to the event and. It's a philanthropic group, so it's a lot, fortunately, well, not fortunately, it's really sad because the government, the NIH, isn't giving to anybody. So very few, you know, if you have, if your cause is babies with AIDS, rightfully so, here's $200 billion right. because that's a patron saint of but this diseases. One, this, this one's so far off the grid. It's more of a boutique disease. It's hmm. mostly women and the child it's mostly women. Years. It's like 80% women. Really? And there's yeah. no, like they haven't cleared up why that is? I, I, I don't know. What they if, they I mean, thought you know. it's environmental. They thought, but it, it's not because it's all over the world. It's all over so, the world. Um, is it mostly in the United States uh, or, or do you no, not know that? There's a lady named Carol Black who's one of the main researchers in London. And hmm. um, I don't know the, the global, I haven't gone through sure. the global right. uh well, I, I think the work you're doing for that is uh, super cool. 
and Thank uh you. you know i don't know how to like it, it sounds dumb to say it's cool but but what no, you're giving like something that you you've uh, has hit you directly and when i was at your event uh, several years ago you can't help but like cry and laugh it's like a movie a great movie you know because you get to you get comedians i think david spade uh, performed no, it was the, dana carvey oh right dana right. carvey that's right and he came up and performed that that year and and then i sang a couple songs and then you get to hear people speak and you get to meet people that are actually suffering from this uh and you see that everything is normal about them except you know this phase of their life and uh anyway uh, i'm glad you're still doing it and i'm really glad that that the work you're doing is starting to uh show some results because a lot of diseases you know they're 50 years into researching and there's nothing and they yeah. always tell you they're going to find the gene you yeah. know and and i have friends i have a couple of friends with muscular dystrophy and jerry lewis for years right. we would say we found the gene and they have found that every every disease by the way is finding a gene now they mm -hmm. are and once they share we've had sightings which you can actually see on our website that are um in, they're, they're hand in hand with cancer research now that you can, we weren't allowed to talk about it for a while, but this year we're, we're excited with the findings that they once you break down, you know, the DNA and once you're able to, you know, stem cells are not a dream of the future. They're expensive, but you can reboot someone. That's the idea, idea wow. of it. So you can change someone's chromosomal makeup and attack the scleroderma ascension which is what you want to do with everything, what you want to do with every disease that attacks your autoimmune system or your vascular system or right. your nervous system. Or I have a nervous system. Yeah, I know. I want to talk about that. Yeah. Your, uh, your nervous system is uh, it's beautiful. You have a beautiful nervous yeah, system. Yeah, it's actually exposed. I wear sweaters. Yeah, um, it, I noticed. It, all my nerves are outside of my body. What They're do kind you of like, like to do? Like, remember V, that series where the lizards would take their faces off, but they were regular people? No. Yeah. They ate the mice. That sounds... Yeah, they ate mice. They ate the mice? They redid it. They redid it because it was so bad the first time. They wanted to bring it back. <laughs> but my nervous system is external, and I, uh, I do that. So that when I'm traveling, mm -hmm. uh, remember anvil cases, you would put your stuff yeah, in it? of course. Do you still use them? Uh, yeah. Company, but same idea. So if you put them on the trucks, but it's a smaller, lighter, more fiberglass type of device? No. This is a long cases. joke. Yeah. This is a really Well, long... I'm saying that people, it's not even a joke. I decided to commit to something which I, I can't really bail on because I don't want to make you edit. <laughs> But my nervous system hangs outside of my spine, and it's oh. it's pink, and it just you can't see it because yeah. it's like a Gila monster's back. Right. And what I do is I'll lay on the ground, and if I'm really tired from the road, I'll You're just get a couple of crew first. guys. This is like aristocrats. <laughs> yeah, well, it's not because that this is going to be over. <laughs> but they'll be like, it'll take like three guys to lift me up by the spine of my nervous system. Right. It's not a spine because it's a nervous system. So they <laughs> they. Sometimes I have to freeze it because there's so much pain. Did you do this to teachers and they were just like, fuck it. You know what? They just me. leave. They hated like, you don't have to ever bring homework. Just don't talk to me anymore. I didn't know anything. I'd made up the Odyssey. I made it <laughs> I made it up. I made a claymation eight millimeter video of the Cyclops. <laughs> And she said, she wrote on my paper. Is this I, real? Real. This is 11th grade after moving again. She wrote, um, you are my student, not my entertainer. <laughs> and I didn't write back on it. Well, I will be one day, bitch. You know, I didn't do that. You didn't. I don't think I'm her entertainer by choice right now. <laughs> oh, I love Bob's nervous system bit that he doesn't stop talking about. <laughs> she was hot, too. She was hot. She was smart. Really? Abington, Pennsylvania. Do you feel I bet I could get like, her now. Do you feel like you're ever She's going to grind down your Adam's apple like uh, uh, like a woman Bruce, would? Like Bruce Jenner did. Did he really? He didn't grind down his mm -hmm. Adam's yes, apple. Yes, sir, he did. Do you think Why that that's he, in your future? Did he do that? When did he do that? He did a month that ago. A month ago. Oh, so he's making a transition. Is that I don't know. I don't know why he did it. He just didn't like it. Yes. I don't know. We don't know yet. So people look at themselves and they don't like the way they look. And I've met him before and I've always liked him. But I don't go usually up to people. I don't. My best friends don't usually, by choice, grind down their Adam's apple. <laughs> you know, if you have choice. knee surgery or orthoscopic. 
Right. It's knees arthroscopic knee surgery. That's different. That's, That's different. You, know, you, you fell, you tripped, you want to sure. re rig the bones in your knee. Get rid of the shrapnel, maybe. Yeah. But uh, I have look like a dude, cause, and dudes have Adam's apples. Mm -hmm. I think I'll file mine down. I just don't think... <laughs> <laughs> if I woke up one day and my Adam's apple was gone, I would probably swallow a peach pit and just keep it there. <laughs> <laughs> just so people would think I was still a dude. Yeah. You mean you'd think... And I'm not being anti... Uh, Anti-dude. Anti-non-wanting to be a dude. Right. You know, if someone doesn't want an Adam's apple and they're a guy... And I'm sure there's guys that are born without Adam's apples. They look you like those so? things from Close Encounters. Huh. Uh, if you know that at Close Encounters, you wait, wait for it. Close Encounters. Then they look there. They're all the same. Every alien that we project when you watch your PBS special of right. people from another planet, you know, and they're skinny little headed fuckers. They look like a nine iron, and they, you know, and they. <laughs> And they got a smoothness where their neck would be. They don't have an Adam's apple. Right. So I think the sexuality in them would just be some kind of blood thing. Or I don't know what it would They don't even have blood. I don't know what it would be. Like a little nub. Maybe they got a nipple under their arm or something. But you can't tell what's man or woman in any alien drawings I've seen that predict what other worlds look like. Are you just trying to end this podcast? Because uh, I Forever. I want this forever. to be your You're last. You're trying to end this. Yeah. But I go back to your questions. It's just, this is what I do with death. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the book is. I talk about death and then I'll just go into my nutsack for like, <laughs> seriously. Because I was writing it and the laptop was on my crotch. So I was concerned I was going to get like a hardened tortoise shell covering. So right. Bruce Jenner wouldn't want. I mean, I don't, I don't think, think he'd he, want to he would take grind his, down that. He would file that. And you, you know, um, my nephew. Somebody told me that they use very. Oh, my daughter told me. I get them confused because my <laughs> nephew had his Adam's apple taken out. Um, there's uh, shells of walnuts that they use to sh smoothen the the parts of the rocket that jettisons away huh. that they let go. You know, your rocket goes up in space. Right. You yeah. know, your rocket, and then <laughs> yeah. it goes off in space, and then they let go of some of that rummage, and it goes to yep. the Earth. That they smooth that down with walnut, like you would give it a scrub. Hmm, why? I I don't know. She saw it on the on a special report. Just I guess so. It enters the atmosphere without as much flames shooting off of it because the more nubbiness it has. Maybe that's why Bruce Jenner took out his Adam's apple right. because, because if he he's moving wanna... his head up and down really fast, he doesn't. He doesn't <laughs> want his uh, the little nub that's like a knee cap below his chin catching on fire. Maybe he's afraid. That is Adam's apple will just burst into flames because of the hard, fast movement re-entering our atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, man. So you've been a director? Like, yes. I've like, been a pusher, a dealer, a lover, but, and a feeler. But all of these things that you've been... None uh, of them well. No, but... What's your favorite thing? If you could just choose one between a director, a writer, a uh, an actor, you know, you're now a novelist. Or, or, or well, I guess it's memoirs. So they call me a writer. I guess. Okay, now you're a or writer. Or they'll say he wrote a book. You're just a book <laughs> writer. How they... But of all these things that that do you just like? Is it like for a musician, making a record and touring are two very different things? But without each other. It's like the balance makes sense for us. Is this whole thing a balance for you? You kind of need all of it? I actually, I think about it. Uh, I did think about it a lot. And now I just do that. I guess David Mamet said it where he got it maybe from Shakespeare, which is we play the cards we are dealt. Mm -hmm. And I just, when a door opens, I just kind of usually wedge my penis in it. Because, <laughs> you know, because then if the door slams, I'll have some sensation. I'm just saying I haven't. You got a woman. I don't know about you guys. You got women? Yes. Uh, Jerry's Jerry's married with two children, and Pergo has a terrible time meeting girls. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So if you meet somebody good, a door opens, you put your penis in it. It's a marker. It's a way to go, it's hey, a statement. I'm here. Yeah. Um, and if <laughs> and you're I'm on the in, other side of the store. And I'm currently in pain. I'm in a lot of pain. You could help me. <laughs> Uh, usually then you put your hand through, you raise your finger and you go, glass of ice, please. And then somebody caring comes over uh, and tries to ice your, your um, sinew. But I, you know, I, um, 
I don't know. I'm, I'm a writer right now. I'm doing stand up right now too. I'm excited about a couple of my dates. I'm going to Australia. I've never been there. You've yeah, been I saw touring. That. You're going to Australia and Florida. Like those are the dates. Well, Florida is because because uh, I need to get my sea legs back because my mom passed away. So I didn't want to just go do a bunch of theaters and and hurt myself and try to perform and so not... you're going to florida to try it out try yeah, it out your it's, new a, it's a club but it's a big club it's like 600 seats a uh, show so i'm gonna do a bunch of shows yeah in two days it well, just when go... i saw you at the moore theater in seattle it says that you filmed one of your specials there did you film that night or no. was it a different night that was a different night okay i did i filmed um it was the end of you weren't there the end of last year no, it wasn't was last years year. Ago. It was a couple of years ago. Yeah. You have such a young crowd. Yeah, it's like interesting. How, how is that? Like, it, it's just, it must be. I think I'm just being tested to see if I'm going to end up in jail. <laughs> I think there, it's no, really, it, I have very What it says young... is that you're, you're creating new material. You're, you're funny about today, not about 20 years ago. Like, I guess. I'm also doing stuff that isn't religion it's not politics it's funny i was watching bill maher last night and i love what he does on there so much and i agree with a lot of things that happen off of that show same thing with john stewart same thing i you know stephen colbert i worship what the man does but in my stand-up i want to just be silly i like to be absurd i like to take i enjoy it it takes my mind out of the reality of pain for an hour i'm not superficial i get i'm the real same with way people. like that's why i don't watch i've never seen schindler's list there's movies it's that funny it really <laughs> is the, the second half is just funny and every oh, time there's something in in you know it's black and white but when they throw a little color in there <laughs> that is so funny <laughs> oh god I mean, I, I, here's what happened to me. I actually watched a movie that I didn't know what it was until I saw it, and it's called Sophie's Choice. Yeah. The last movie I will ever watch that has anything to do with reality. Mm -hmm. I just want to see a dumb guy who meets this hot girl, and they have this little struggle, and then at the very end, everything's awesome. That's the movie I want to watch every day. That's nice. That is... I, I don't blame you there's so many movies that came out this year that are so good and i've had so much trouble watching them and i'm, I'm wanting to watch 12 years a slave and i i can't watch i that. have to watch it i know i have to you but have i to. don't like seeing people hurt i really and especially because my mother just passed away it was a bad time for me to you know oh you have all these screeners you know you should be watching them and you, you come from the cemetery and you put something on that just yeah just like reminds you of out. life like not, who needs it well, it's good for people, I guess, that are that need to be brought in and be taught of what humanity has gone through and Maybe. what humanity does. You're already a kind person. You're not a person that would would hurt someone. I don't think. Well, do you put people in like leather gimp suits and keep them in basements? I mean, do you do that where you just feed, feed them like sardines, like when you feel like it? Not, not sardines. Tuna. Nothing fish like tuna. <laughs> no, no, gummy bears. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's like I, I think my dad was a big influence on what I find entertaining, like. I don't want to be reminded of it either. And you're right. I, I probably should watch some of these movies as well. I, I should see, you know, these these movies that are about our country or maybe the the difficulty of, of humanity. But when I am not working, I kind of want to turn off the part of me that, like I have, you know, I don't have as, as many difficulties <clears throat> with with loss as you do, but I have enough that, keep me working and writing and trying to connect with my own part of being a human being so that I can relate to people like you do with comedy. I try to do that with songs, but when I'm not working, I don't want to be, I don't want to live through somebody else's, you know, bad time. Yeah. And like there's Beck was, uh, was talking to Butch Walker about this. And he said, you know, I like hanging out with guys that are, that are pop, writers and and pop singers more than like all the alternative woe is me people because they all sit in a room and bag everything and and call everything shitty and life sucks and music sucks and then he said he'll go hang out with elton john 
and he'll play 500 hit songs and high five everybody in the front row and be like, isn't fucking life amazing? Yeah. And it's like, I just want more of that. Yeah. Like, and that's what I want And I to, think that's what your comedy is. That's what I want it to be. And I, I want think people to is. go out. And that's what your music is. When you, it, A love song, for example. I mean, I was almost just going to meet any random stranger or flight attendant and just have a boom box like, like Cusack did right? and just have marry me on it and just walk up to the first flight attendant, male, female, yep. Adam's apple, Bruce Jenner, sand it down, <laughs> take a plane, sand it, mark it with a B, put it in the oven, the baby and me, shellac it, varnish it. You can butterfly it. You could saute it. But I would have marry me on a boombox. You know how easy it is. It's so easy to a get with a me? woman to say yes. Can you sing a little bit for people? You got? Do you even know the words? I don't know how it begins, but I I, I know. Forever could never be long enough for me to feel like I've been long enough with you. Forget the world now, we won't let them see. There's one thing left to do Now that the weight has lifted And love has surely shifted my way Marry me it Sounds like a day K-pop every day <laughs> <laughs> Marry me Marry me and shit Marry me, I'm Barry Gibb <laughs> Done by Jimmy Fallon So, do you think that you're going to make uh, Bruce Jenner part of your, your comedy? No, I don't like to do comedy about people That was weird that I did it on here I don't do attacks on, on people It's weird I don't talk about famous people Um I don't so, like to hurt but, people. It's but, weird. I do. No, it. it's not a hurt. But you do talk about people because when I saw you, you the talked, people there. The you people. talked. You talked briefly about Mary Kate and Ashley. I didn't say anything. Never negative. Lascivious, no, right? no, 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 no. Never negative. So no, it's never an attack. Right. But it was very interesting. I'm. Uh, I'm very fatherly with them, which is a not a conflict of interest. It's just something that, I mean, I diapered them when they were Crazy. nine months old. I mean, just to think about I that. I diapered them nutty. just two years ago, actually. <laughs> that's Ashley's joke. She's, I, I have full, that's in the book. I actually have full permission. Isn't one of them getting married right now? I it's don't, I don't know. Have yeah. you stayed friends with the whole cast? Cause yes. uh, Stamos, I'm, I saw him at the Howard Stern thing. I yeah. emailed him and he just won't get back to me. Is oh, that I'll just, make him get back. Is that just something he's, uh, he's all about? He, we're, we're all, I was supposed to go to that thing. I had to go to, um, uh, Phoenix and then go back to see my dying mother. <laughs> Sorry, didn't mean, didn't mean to laugh, but that, but, uh, yeah, we're, we're close. I mean, it's yeah. everybody it, closer than I think any other cast of a show. And they were all, a lot of the, half the cast was kids. So yeah. they're not anymore. I don't like to have disingenuous m moments in my life. No, I don't, you don't like to huh? spend times, even if I had a series for one year. I, I have affection for those people, right? And I, except for a couple, I mean, there's always a, yeah, a yeah. negative, like you sure. were saying, a person that's full of negativity. Sure, you don't want to be around it, and, and I don't want any it's, more it's negative funny. in my life. It, and I don't know if it's the Pennsylvania in both of us or whatever, but I I know famous people that it, it's a really funny, weird thing, and maybe this happens to you. You'll text back and forth, like maybe for an hour, and then it's not even like your idea. It'll be like, dude, we got to get together. Let's <laughs> fucking get together in the next 20 minutes. Like, dude, we got to do this. You'll be like, awesome, man. That sounds good. Well, uh, when? Yeah, people Three say. Three weeks goes by and right. there's never, like, it wasn't even my idea. What are you doing? Where did you go? I, I call people. I went through a thing, and it's part of my midlife crisis, which is about 40 years long. There's a, there's, there's, my life is midlife crisis, and then like 12 years on either side. You know, uh, and I this year, and it's part of as my mother started to die, as I just started to f look at life a little differently. A lot of couch time, you know, not laying there, but talking. Yeah. Uh, uh, I just started to feel like, if, hey, the 
few people that I really like, I'd like to see him. Yeah. So I called up somebody, and he's he told me I he was a well known guy. I don't want to drop the name; it just seems stupid. But it, it's a very, I'll make it brief because I'm not going to drop the name. But I I just said to him, uh, he's I called him. He said, "Why why are you calling me?" I said, "Well, a year ago we bumped into each other at a restaurant, and you gave me your number, and you said." Uh, Let's go to lunch. I'd really like to hear from you. I said, "Well, it's a year, and um, I'm calling you." And he said, "Well, what do you? What's this lunch about?" Because it's he's a successful guy, so it was like, you know, do you want? Is it is it business? Do I have to listen to a right? Do I have to hear of a pitch? three acts of right. a movie? And I said, "No." He said, "Well, what's your reason for wanting to go to lunch with me?" I said, "Because I love you." Hmm. And he just cracked up. He said, "Okay, I'll call you. I'll oh. call you in a couple weeks." I and did he? Heard. Haven't heard from him. Huh. Stamos. Of, it's Stamos. It's well, it's Bruce Jenner. And <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize that he was so busy. Uh. He actually said, I'll call you in a couple of weeks because they had sanded off his oh, right. Adam's <laughs> apple. The restaurant that I saw him at, ironically, they have a delicious Adam's apple. They <laughs> they put butterscotch on it and they um there's a real thick coating on it. You know, so, kind of glycerin. And, and, hardened candy. And, what, you know, it's like a really lovely gesture that, that you put out there that... And does it discourage you? Or are you like, nah, I don't care. I'm just No, gonna, that's the other thing. I go thing to the is, next thing. I wish I had known uh, my whole life. I probably would be uh, much more successful because it, it's the art of being a 22-year-old girl that everybody wants to date. Hmm. The key t that I didn't learn as an older uh, man... Which I like to equate to a 20, 20, 22 year old girl that everyone wants to date, <laughs> is that their knowledge of just walk away and don't answer somebody, and that makes you want them. It's just a trick. It's not anything. It has nothing to do with anything. But if yeah. it's a beautiful girl that a guy wants and she doesn't respond for whatever reason, that makes the guy want her more. Yeah. It's just like what is that book that was out years ago, The Rules? Right. Right. Yeah, so it's just it's just a bunch of crap. It's just a bunch of it's tricks. It's games. It's games. It's, it's, funny. it's learning how to make it. Also, salesmen. You know, if you're in a room, somebody's trying to sell something, they yeah. want you to buy something. The key is to walk away. It's it's all one big scam. Yeah, it is. It's a it's a pretty sneaky stuff. Like my wife and I talk about this a lot, and that's why I think I have the greatest wife in the world. Is she's a gorgeous, beautiful, lovely person. But can she's, I have time with she's her? She's always been like, what's that? Can I have time with her? No, <laughs> but uh. She will say, she man, text, though. And she's then, never been a game player, and that is, like, so attractive to me. Right. Like, that's so lovely, you know, and it, it has a lot to do with her, her family. Like, your family teaches you how you're going to be, and, you know, hopefully they will. But I wondered if you would sing a song with me. I would like that very much. Uh, Jerry's here. He's not very good, but he's, he's all I got. Tell him a little bit. That was Bob Saget Part 1 here on the PatCast. Find out more about Bob at dirtydaddy.bobsaget.com. Uh, he's doing stand-up shows in Chicago, Santa Monica, San Francisco, and many other places, but that's just this week. Uh, he'll be in Australia in May, and he'll be back in the U.S. for some more shows in June. At Bob Saget uh, is his Instagram and Twitter name, and he's on Facebook as well. We're going to put up a link to an excerpt uh, from his book on patcast.com and you can always find us over there on iTunes and Instagram, Twitter and Facebook at Pot Patcast Podcast. Uh, thanks for listening everybody. We'll be back with more from Bob next week including a live performance of Bob's favorite song. <laughs> <laughs>